Hi, welcome back to the power of model drawing. Now, today we are going to continue with our model drawing for P3 and P4. So let's look at practice problem one. And uh, all right, let's see how do we draw out this problem. Now, Mrs. Chu bought a peach, two pears, and six apples for $8.70. The cost of one pear and three apples was $2.60. So what was the cost of the peach? All right, so uh, in this question, you can see that there's no more than, there's no three times, and so on. Uh, so, but how do we solve this problem? Is there any other method, or is there any method that we can use? Uh, one of the methods is uh, using elimination method, right? There's a method called elimination. Uh, another method is, of course, is model drawing. So you actually have a few methods to solve this problem. Uh, but we are going to focus on model drawing today. So let's see how we draw. Uh, so first of all, you have a rectangle. So when you draw a model, you have you always start with two types of model. Uh, it's either the Pazzo model or the comparison model. So you have to think about which model you want to start with. So for this problem, it is not really a, there's no comparing here, right? There's no, uh, there's no comparing. So I will draw a Pazzo model and, and I will cut one box for the peach. So what I can do is uh, I will put the P inside. All right, now, then I remember, Mr. Tong, I, I remember I told you all some months ago that you always put the labels outside put the labels outside the rectangle, uh, and then numbers are inside, right? Numbers are inside the, the boxes. Uh, but for this problem, well, it will be better, right? If you actually put the letters inside. So it all depends on what you want to do, right? So some of you may want to put the letters inside, some want to put the letters outside. Uh, but usually when we draw the model, we always put the labels outside and the numbers we put inside. But in this question, it's a little bit uh, special. You will see why is it so later. Okay, so Mr. Chu bought a peach and then two pears. Uh, so I will need to do something like that, but you can see the letters are the same. So it's very confusing, right? If you have the same letter. So maybe I will just put something like this, peach, right? P-H, right? P-H for peach and then P for pears. And then there are six apples. So you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I will label apples in the boxes. And then the total, total money for all of these uh, fruits will be eight dollar and seventy cents. Okay, now one pair and three apples was two dollar sixty cents. So can you find the cost of one peach? So why do I want to put the letters in the boxes so that I can do something like this? Right, I can circle the letters. So one peach, okay, one peach and uh, three pairs. All right, so you circle one peach and three pairs. How much would that be? Uh, that will be. Uh, okay, so let's do something like that. That will be $8.70, right? Okay, for this one peach and three apples. All right, and then a uh, one pair and three apples. One pair and three apples was $2.60. Ah, okay, let me just undo. There's a, okay, there's a, there's a writing error. So one pair and three apples was $2.60. All right, then you can circle again, right? You circle another pair and uh, three more apples. So that will be another $2.60, right? Okay, so now can you find how much is one peach? So how do you find one peach? So you just have to add these two together. So you have $2.60 and you times two and you will get $5.20, right? And now can I find how much is one peach? So you take the total cost which is $8.70 minus $5.20. So one pitch will be $3.50. And that's how you solve. Oh, and this is the reason why, why I put the letters into the boxes so that I can circle, or I can circle the groups. Ah, groups. So in other words, you are using something like grouping. So you have one group that has one pair and three apples, then you circle another group that has one pair and three apples, and then you can find the peach, which is $3.50. All right, so that is a very simple model drawing. So let's go to another problem. So now you have fractions. And uh, fractions, uh, usually most students, they don't draw the model because it's still quite easy to work out the, work out the answer. Uh, but you need to start the model drawing, right? Even though it looks easy, because when you go to primary five, you will still have fractions, uh, but it will be harder to solve already because you will get more complex. So uh, to, to, to be able to solve the problem, right, using model, you need to start drawing the model at primary four level. And even though you know how to solve it without the model, it is still good 
important that you always try to draw out the fractions. Then when you go to primary five, it's easier. So for example, Amy read one quarter of the book on Monday. She read two thirds of the book on Tuesday and the rest of the book on Wednesday. Now, one of the most common mistakes that students have make or students make when they are in primary five is they see fractions, they just plus them and you and they minus them. Right? They take one quarter plus two thirds or one or two thirds minus one quarter without thinking whether it can be done or not. At primary four level, right, there's no such there's no remainder thoughts yet. You don't see the word remainder at primary four level. Uh, that's why it's easy, right? Every time you see fractions, you, you just add them because because they both refer to the same same thing. But when you go to primary five, when you start to have the remainder or something different, uh, then what happens? Then you cannot add the fractions like that. You cannot minus the fractions. You cannot make the denominator the same anymore because the fractions refer to different things. So at this primary four level, you have to start thinking about what the fractions are referring to so that when you go to primary five, you don't get confused. You don't always, you don't start to keep, you don't start adding and subtracting fractions just because you have done it in primary four. In primary five, it's going to be different. So for example, this fraction refers to the book, right? It's talking about the book and the two third is talking about the same book. So that's why we can plus them together. That's what you do, right? You take one quarter plus two thirds because the two fractions are talking about the same thing. All right, but because we want to draw model and the two fractions are talking about the same book, so we make the denominator the same so that we can draw the box. We can draw a rectangle and cut into 12 boxes. So four times three and one times three. So you have three over 12, three times four and two times four, eight over 12. All right, so how do we draw the model using the two fractions? Very easy. A rectangle for, for the whole book cut into 12 boxes. So you have six or five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And uh, three boxes was read on Monday. And then another eight boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, okay, let me see. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight until here was read on Tuesday and the rest were read on Wednesday, right? So you should start to, you should start to use the model, uh, you, you should start to draw out the model uh, using the fractions, right? Start using, start, st start learning how to use the fractions to draw the model so that when you go to P5, it'll be easier, all right? Much, much easier. All right, then what happened? Now, you have drawn until here already. She read 17 pages of the book on Wednesday which means that your one unit is 17, right? One unit, okay? So what fraction of the book did she read on Wednesday? Now, if you draw the model, you can see that you have actually lesser steps. Uh, like for part A, you, you actually don't have a lot of steps. So what fraction of the whole book, which is how many units, which is all together 12 units, did she read on Wednesday? That is one over 12. And that's your part A already by looking at the model. So let's put one unit inside every box. And now let's look at part B. How many pages were there in the book? All right, so, uh, so how many pages were there in the book? So if one unit is equal to 17, that's what you see in the model, then how many units are there altogether? There are 12 units, so that will be 12 times 17. So what is 12 times 17? And you will get child times 17, you will have 204 pages in the book. So just a few steps only if you draw the model. All right, but, but the purpose of drawing the model at P4 level when you see fractions is to help you to draw more complicated problems at P5 when there are also fractions. All right, you will still have fractions at P5 level and of course the problem will get more complicated especially with the word remainder. So you need to start knowing how to draw this simple model first before you can draw out the model with the remainder. All right, let's go to another example. All right, uh, now you can see that we are looking at a different question, no fractions, uh, just whole numbers. So let's read, Jim, Ravi, and Sean had a total of three, two, eight, five dollars. Ravi had twice as much as Jim. So there is a comparison model, or there's a comparison here. So we draw the comparison model. And Sean had twice as much as Ravi. So Sean has three and Ravi has one time. So how much did Jim have? 
And what was the total money that Sean must give to both Ravi and Jim so that all of them will have the same amount of money? So your part B looks a bit complicated. Uh, but when you draw the model, complicated problems become easier to handle because you can just zoom in on the model and play with the model to write the steps. Okay, so let's draw out the sentence. Uh, if the first sentence you are not sure how to draw, then you always go to the next step, go to the next sentence. Ravi had two boxes and uh, Jim, has, Jim has one box. So let's, uh, let's label the word, the letter Jim. Uh, J. So Ravi has two boxes and Jim, right? Jim has one box. And Sean had three times as much as Ravi. So it means that Sean has three times as much as Ravi. That's, uh, that's one time, all right? Same as Ravi, same as Ravi's rectangle, which is one, uh, one time, then two times, and then three times, all right? So Sean had three times as much as Ravi. And you need to cut it to make the model all, all, the, all equal, all right? Which is very important. Okay, and then after that, uh, you need to do what? You need to call them units. So every box is now called one unit. And then the first sentence that you couldn't draw, you have to go back and add on to the model, which is three, two, eight, five dollars. Okay, so how much did Jim have? So your question mark is here, okay? All right, so can we solve already? Yes, of course we can already because you count the total units. Ravi has two unit, uh, Jim has one unit, and uh, Sean has six unit. So together they have nine units, which is $3,285. And then you can find one unit. You take 3285 and then you divide by nine. And uh, what do you get? So you do your working. And 3285 divided by 9, you will get $365, which is one unit. So Jim has how much money? Jim has $365. Okay, let's look at part B. So what was the total money that Sean must give to Ravi and Jim so that all of them have the same number? So that is like a before and after question, right? So can we draw a before and after model? So how do we draw a before and after model? Okay, now, if you look carefully, what is unchanged? If Sean gives to Ravi and Jim, what is still unchanged? The total money is still unchanged, right? The total money. All right, so they have all together nine units. Nine units, if you look at the boxes. Now, if this is a before model, then how are we going to draw the after model? So lesson here, if you think that the problem is a before and after, then you can draw before and after model. So the after model will be like this. So every one of them is going to have the same amount. And of course, the total is still the same, which is 3285. And the total units is still the same, which is nine units. Am I correct? They are supposed to have the same total. And you take nine units and you divide by three because everybody has equal amounts of money. So Ravi has three units. Jim has three units and Sean also has three units. So everybody has, uh, everybody has what? Everybody has equal amounts of money. Okay, let me just draw nicely. You can see that I'm using freehand, all right? I'm not using any, uh, any, computer, any computer to work out or to draw the, the rectangles. So I'm using freehand and that's what you'll be doing in the exams. So you'll be using your freehand or a ruler to draw. So everybody has three units. Okay, now, so, sh so how much money must Sean give to both Ravi and Jim? Then you look at Sean, right? Look at Sean and look at his money before and after. So how much did Sean have at first? And how much did he have in the end, right? So you compare, right? So you can see that if one unit is $365, I mean one unit is $365, uh, Sean has six units at first. And now he has only three units left. So which means that he must have given away three units, right? Three units to who? To Ravi and Jim. So nine unit minus six unit. So Sean has given away three units. And the three units will be how much? 
So if one unit is $365, then you just multiply by 3. So 365 times 3, so Sean must have given $1,095 to both, to both Ravi and Jim. And that's how you, you draw the model, which is like a before and after model. All right, so we have come to the end of this model drawing lesson. As you can see that model drawing is not very hard to learn. All right, it's all about, the, it's all about, about, uh, about drawing out the sentences one by one. Uh, as long as you can understand the problem, you can understand the sentence. Uh, and then as you draw out the sentences, right, you should be able to work out some steps. Right? And with the steps that you have written, uh, then you get the answer. Otherwise, you will, you will still get the meta marks in the exam. So, so I really encourage you, right? those of you who are not good in your math, right? you must try to draw the model. If, if, because your school teachers are drawing the model, so of course you are expected, right? I will expect you to also be able to draw the model since you are learning in school as well. So when you come for lessons, right? Uh, model drawing is very essential, right? Especially when you go to primary five, primary six, uh, without model drawing, right? It's gonna be very tough to solve a, a difficult problem, all right? Okay, so we come to the end of this model drawing lesson. So stay tuned for the next lesson and I will see you soon.